Hey, welcome. Thanks for clicking and spending a few minutes with me on my very first video for my new channel, Elevated Makerspace. I'm CJ and I'm kicking things off with something fun, the Algo Laser Pixie Smart Laser Engraver. If you recognize the set, you've probably seen me over on Elevated Systems. If not, nice to meet you. I'm borrowing this set while I finish building out a brand new makerspace that's going to be home to all my 3D printer and maker tool reviews and projects moving forward. I'll talk more about the new channel in a bit, but right now, let's check out what this compact laser engraver can actually do. When Algo Laser reached out and asked if I wanted to review the Pixie, I knew it was the perfect product to kick this off. It's a little different, a little familiar. Basically, they've taken the classic open frame XY gantry laser like their Mark II, the X-Tool D1, or Creality's Falcon, and shrunk it down into a compact, fully enclosed, beginner-friendly machine. Now, this form factor isn't unique. There are other small enclosed diode lasers like the Sculptfun iCube or the Wayne Lux K8 or the Genmitsu kiosk style laser, which looks suspiciously identical. But what sets the Pixie apart isn't just the hardware, it's the software. I'll get into that, but first let's take a look at what's in the box and get it set up. I knew this was gonna be a small piece of kit, but it wasn't until the box arrived that I realized just how compact this thing is. Right on top was the pictographic user guide, simple and helpful, and the Pixie itself was snug in open cell foam. Inside the enclosure, all the accessories were packed neatly in more foam, the exhaust pipe and flange, an Allen key, a brush, a stylus, a USB-C cable and adapter, and then the 60 watt power supply, and a small sample material kit. Set up a straightforward, attach the exhaust tube, plug it in, and that's it. No calibration or assembly required. Let's go over the specs quickly so you know what we're working with. The big win is the footprint, about 265 by 214 millimeters and only 195 millimeters tall. The Z height can be lifted in detents 25, 50, 75, or 100 millimeters, so you can clear thicker stock or add rotary accessories. That puts maximum height at roughly 295 millimeters. Power options are three, five, or 10 watts, all 450 nanometer blue diodes. The 10 watt model I'm testing uses a 0 0.08 by 0 0.12 millimeter spot. It runs Algo OS on a built-in 3.5 inch touchscreen, so you can design, frame, and run jobs completely offline. If you prefer a tethered workflow, it also works with the Algo Laser mobile app or desktop software like Lightburn. Supported file types include JPEG, PNG, SVG, BMP, DWG, and standard G code. Safety wise, the enclosure is interlocked and the system is rated to IEC, 60825-1, class one, when used correctly. Mechanically, it's a compact steel chassis with a plastic enclosure, belt-driven XY on dual linear rails, a manual Z-Vocus knob, and an aluminum gridded bed. IO is simple. On top, you get the touchscreen and a work start button. Around back, there's the power port and switch, USB-C for PC connection or thumb drive, and an ARR accessory port for things like the roller or chuck. We'll get more in depth, but a few software niceties worth calling out are built-in image text tools, a reverse engraving mode for high contrast results, multi-language support, and over-the-air firmware updates. Algo Laser also advertises engraving on a wide variety of materials, which I'll sanity check in testing. It comes in passion red or deep black. At the time I'm recording, list pricing shows machine only at 199, 269 and 329 for the three, five and 10 watt models with higher basic kit bundles also available, but I'll include a link to check current prices below. Now that you know what it is, let's see what it does. For my first project, I used the included sample birch plywood in one of the 80 plus preloaded files, a potted plant magnet felt on brand. I used the focus gauge to dial in the Z height, lined up the job using the movement menu and ran the framing to make sure everything was in the right place. The Pixie uses absolute coordinates, so you're not guessing where you're designing to land. I hit start and immediately got a warning. The door wasn't fully shut. One quick wiggle and the interlock clicked and the machine got to work. 
On screen, you get job progress, elapsed time, time remaining, and you can pause, stop, or adjust speed and power mid-job. About eight minutes later, the job was done and the results were pretty great. The engraving looked good and the cut was almost perfect. Just one tiny sliver holding on. That's because the default settings for that file used a single slow high powered pass. I got cleaner cuts later using slightly lower power and two passes. With the test project done and the laser working properly, it was time to fire up some of my own designs. And the cool part is, I can do that directly on the machine. I dropped a couple of image files onto the thumb drive, plugged it into the Pixie, and launched the projects menu. From there, I selected the USB drive and chose my new elevated makerspace logo PNG. The next screen gives you a list of preset material profiles to pick from, but since I like pushing boundaries, the material I selected for this project wasn't on the list. That's because it's clear glass, which technically isn't supported on a diode laser. The beam just passes right through. But if you coat the surface with black paint or laser marking spray, you can absolutely engrave on glass with a 10 watt laser diode. So I sprayed a small glass ornament, picked a similar material profile and manually dialed in the power and speed, 100% power, 1000 millimeters per minute, two passes. After framing the job and hitting start, the pixie got to work. Once the laser marking spray was rinsed off, I had a clean, sharp glass ornament etched with my logo. I repeated the process with both my elevated makerspace and more complex lifting Linux logos across different materials. The built-in material profiles are actually really handy. They include pictographic grids that let you easily pick your engraving intensity. For example, I burned the same image into birch plywood using two different presets, one high power slow speed pass for a deep engrave and one low power faster speed pass for a lighter result. I did run into a few minor issues while the Pixie doesn't have air assist, the internal module cooling fan does move some air, which was enough to blow around lighter workplaces like painted metal business cards or tiny metal charms. You can actually see where this one charm shifted between the first and second pass. Easy fix though, a little double-sided tape holds everything in place. I also had a couple of user errors. First, I engraved my lifting Linux logo onto another glass ornament, but I forgot to invert the colors, which you should always do for engraving on clear surfaces. And that's totally on me because the Algo OS actually has a built-in feature for that. My second mistake was trying to engrave the same logo onto one of the metal business cards using those high energy settings. That much power warped the card badly. It even flexed enough to hit the laser module. These cards are better suited for simple line art or text, not dense raster engraving. Aside from that, nearly every project on every material I tested turned out great. The combination of offline control, profile-based presets, and real-time tweakability makes Algo AS generally beginner-friendly without limiting more advanced users. Now, Algo OS also includes a couple of extra features like Algo Type and Algo Sketch. Algo Type lets you type and engrave text right from the screen, but it's limited to just two fonts and basic bounding boxes, no offset cutting. Algo Sketch lets you freehand draw with the included stylus. It's a fun idea, but the touchscreen is way too small and the latency is rough. I couldn't even draw a cartoon dog face with any kind of accuracy. Still, at a craft fair or event, being able to quickly sketch initials or add a name to a craft product in real time could be really useful. These tools aren't completely worthless. Their usefulness is just held back by the hardware. To overcome that limitation, Algo Laser also offers a mobile app which replicates and improves on many of the onboard features. After launching the app, I connected it to the Pixie and had access to similar options, built-in images, saved projects, or custom files placed in the Algo Laser folder on my phone. From there, I could scale and position the image, adjust engraving parameters, and start the job. But while the app adds flexibility, it also feels a bit unfinished. It's missing the full material library and graphical parameter selector like you get on the machine itself. That means you need to already know the exact speed and power settings for your material. There's no image invert option either and no ability to automatically cut out an engraving, both of which the machine supports. 
There are some improvements. The text tool in the app gives you more fonts and style options, and drawing on my iPhone, which is much better, even with just a finger. Using an iPad and Apple Pencil would be ideal here. There's even a QR code generator that actually works, which could be a nice way to offer custom promo items. That said, the app isn't perfect. It doesn't show live coordinates when moving the head, it blocks the screen on the machine itself, and it can't access your photo roll. You have to copy files into a specific folder. None of that is a deal breaker, but it definitely feels unfinished. Hopefully it'll improve with updates, but as I always say, I don't review future promises, just what's available now. Now, before I jump into the next feature, I want to quickly talk about this channel, Elevated Makerspace, and why I created it. You might know me from my main channel, Elevated Systems, where I cover everything from PCs to Linux to maker gear. But lately, YouTube has doubled down on favoring niche-focused creators. If your channel covers a bunch of topics, it often gets buried in the algorithm. So rather than fighting that, I created this dedicated space just for 3D printers, lasers, and DIY projects. The upside is views aren't tied to subscriber count the way they used to be, which is great for new channels like this. The downside is brands still haven't caught up. Companies like Algo Laser, Anycubic, Creality, Xtool, Bamboo Labs, they often won't send review units unless you've got tens of thousands of subs. Now, as I've always done, if I'm interested in something, I'll buy it and review it out of pocket, but that's not sustainable forever. So if you appreciate independent, honest reviews, hit that subscribe button and help show brands that you trust my judgment. All right, back to the laser. Despite its small size, there's one feature that instantly upgrades the Pixie from a novelty machine to a legitimate tool for makers and small businesses. It's fully compatible with Lightburn, which is pretty much the gold standard for prosumer and small shop laser workflows, and using it with the Pixie was simple and straightforward. I connected the laser to my laptop via the included USB cable, opened Lightburn, and added the Pixie in just a few clicks. It recognized the 100 by 100 millimeter bed, and I was ready to go. With a full feature platform like Lightburn, the creative possibilities are only really limited by the Pixie's size and power. Even with just 10 watts of diode output and a 100 millimeter squared work area, there's a surprising amount you can accomplish. You can knock out small batch custom keychains in wood, leather, or acrylic, personalized coasters, no problem whether you're engraving slate cork or bamboo jewelry tags and charms and anodized aluminum or stainless steel are easily handled and glass ornaments can be laser marked with the right prep you can even do precision panel engraving for electronics enclosures or whip up custom qr code tags bookmarks label plates dog tags nameplates projects that are small in size but high in value especially for artists and small businesses to get started, I ran a few material tests on Baltic Birch and Black Acrylic to build out some material profiles. I'll drop a link to those test files in the description below if you want to try them out. Once I had good baseline settings, I pulled in my elevated makerspace logo, added a couple of offset paths, dialed in a few laser settings, and created a clean, simple keychain. The Pixie handled it beautifully, crisp engraving, clean cuts, and zero issues. I even used the mobile app to engrave a QR code linking to the channel on the back of the keychain. Combining what Algo OS, the mobile app, and Lightburn each bring to the table really unlocks the Pixie's full potential. It might be small, but with the right workflow, it punches well above its weight. Now, there were a few issues worth noting. The most common was the interlock switch not always engaging when I closed the lid. I had to give it an extra push to make sure it clicked. Worse, the head sometimes moved before the interlock error kicked in, and restarting the job meant it picked up from the wrong location, usually off the material. Also, when running jobs from the touchscreen, you can bypass the open door warning, which is great for oversized items like this Japanese flush cut saw, but that override doesn't work in Lightburn. I also ran into what I'd call a quality issue with my machine. When etching black acrylic at low power, around 20%, the outer edges didn't engrave fully. The middle came out perfect, but the etching faded as it reached the outsides. It was consistent at that setting, and I suspect that the firmware might be lowering the laser power to compensate for the deceleration at the edges. I also ran into a safety concern. A couple of times when I stopped a job with the physical button, the laser stayed on, and I had to 
cut power manually. And there's no flame detection. During one test, I literally set Baltic Birch on fire and the Pixie just kept going, no alarm or anything. There's also no laser safety glasses included unless you buy the more expensive bundle. For any laser product, they should definitely be standard. A couple accessories I'd love to see added, a top-down camera module. The absolute coordinate system is great, but being able to visually line up a regular items like jewelry would be a huge usability boost. None of these are deal breakers, but they're definitely worth keeping in mind. I reached out to Algo Laser concerning these issues, and when I get a reply, I'll post it in a pinned comment below. So now that I've had some solid time with the Algo Laser Pixie, the big question is, who is this laser for and is it worth it? Let's start with who it's not for. If you're already running a high output laser workshop, cranking out dozens of slate coasters, cork mouse pads, tumblers, or large panel engravings every week, this machine's probably won't fit into your workflow. The limited area and diode class power just don't match the demand of high throughput production. But if you're a maker looking to expand your toolkit with laser engraving and cutting capabilities, and you don't need a huge bed size or industrial grade power, the Pixie makes a lot of sense. It's also a great fit for anyone who wants a compact, portable machine they can bring to craft fairs or markets to do on-the-spot personalized items for customers. Names on leather tags, initials on metal charms, or logos on keychains, coasters, or even glass ornaments. You can also see the Pixie being useful for small businesses that want to create low-volume promotional items in-house, things like pens, bookmarks, branded flasks, or even QR code business tags. If you'd had to pivot your product offering due to platform restrictions or policy changes on certain online marketplaces, a machine like this could open up a new product line quickly and affordably. The three and five watt versions could be great for more specialized creative work, paper crafters, uh, leather workers, jewelry makers, or model builders looking to expand their creative flexibility without over-investing. With fall around the corner, I've even been toying with the idea of trying out some laser etched leaf art, which might actually be better suited for the three watt model. Ultimately, the Pixie hits a sweet spot for anyone looking to add small scale or small batch laser work to their hobby or business. The price is reasonable, the learning curve is minimal, and the feature set, especially when paired with light burn, offers a surprising amount of versatility. For the right user, this little machine can unlock a lot of potential. That wraps up my look at the Algo Laser Pixie. If this video helped you out, or if you're just excited to see more maker tools, project builds, and reviews, be sure to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss what's coming next. Thanks for being here, and I'm just getting started.